Dallas police officers have to shoot armed suspect and people that led them on a police chase uh, after two police vehicles is rammed. Check it out, y'all. New video we're going to share with you tonight that is going to show you a chaotic series of events all happening in just a matter of seconds. Police were tracking a stolen vehicle this afternoon. They collide, as you see here, and then four guys jump out and they take off running. But that is just part of and the beginning of the story. As Aaron Jones explains, police then opened fire on those men, and it all went down at a Northeast Dallas apartment complex. Michelle Gonzalez says around 1 p.m. Thursday, she heard a crash outside her apartment and came outside. And then there was like four or five cops running out this way, um, shooting out. Yeah, it's definitely a scary situation. The incident is shown here on home surveillance video. You can see masked suspects. Dallas Police Chief Eddie Garcia says undercover officers tracked a stolen car to the back of Lakeside Apartments in North Dallas. He says when patrol officers approached, four people were inside the truck and the driver took off. The dude get ran over right there? It seemed like he just got narrowly under the car in the right way. He couldn't get out because he fell out of the car. Everybody else ran and the police officers had to go and chase these guys. Hey, can we get a round of applause for the Dallas police? <laughs> I know that they're trying to defund the police all across the nation, but every time I see that these people are putting their lives on the line in order to keep us safe and to make sure that crime is not out of control, shout out to the Dallas police. I have to give them a round of applause because they are the ones that's on the front line of preventing our stuff from getting stolen, our cars from getting broken into, our homes from getting bro broken into, our children being safe. They are the ones that are on the front lines every day. I know that all the time that we like to give all of the credit to the military members and the military members absolutely deserve all of the credit in the world. But I also want to acknowledge the police officers, not the bad ones like the one that shot Sonia Massey the other day, because that's one individual that deserves to be under the jail. But the ones every single day that police our communities that live, work and play and is underpaid by our taxpayers while we have our politicians sending all of this money over to Ukraine and stuff like that. I want to give a shout out to the police officers that's out here taking care of business, putting their lives on the line and ensuring that criminals is not getting away. We don't need to defund the police. We need to continue to fund the ones that protect our community. I want to give them a shout out before we continue with the show. Striking two of their vehicles. At one point, um, officers uh, fired their weapons uh, at an armed suspect. Uh, we then found uh, a firearm near the area where the shooting occurred. Uh, the suspect fled, continued to flee northbound and was ended up uh, getting apprehended. Uh, he was taken to the hospital. Uh, he is expected to survive. I saw them shooting. Good. Now he can do his time like a man if he's firing at a police officer over a stolen vehicle. Um, I have my two kids at home, um, so that really just shook me. I had to go inside and get my kids, make sure that they were good, not around, around the windows or anything. No officers were injured. Chief Garcia says the suspects were armed and police recovered three weapons. Something like our movie, really. I wasn't expecting to wake up this, this afternoon and see all the cops out there like that. Two other suspects were taken into custody at the scene. One was injured and taken to the hospital in stable condition. One suspect got away. Uh, and we will continue to do this investigation to try and to I hope they snitch on him so they can capture him too. Hate that suspect and also one of the suspects that was arrested in the stolen vehicle uh, that fled was wanted out of the city of Dallas for a murder warrant. He said, and this would never happen in Chicago. This would never happen in Chicago. They don't support their police officers. We support the police officers nationwide. Great job over there in Dallas. I don't care how small or petty the crime is. I want them on the job. We support them and we don't support police officers going in and killing women in their homes unwarranted but we absolutely su support our police officers keeping us safe every single day. So shout out to the Dallas police officers again. We appreciate you. Also on top of that, um, a man, and this obviously it always disturbs me when I see anything related to children, uh, but a man is accused, an Uber driver is accused of sexually assaulting a 12 year old girl. Check it out. A rideshare driver was released from jail five days after his arrest for sexual assault of a child, a 12-year-old passenger. Hello, I'm Steve Eager. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. So the girl was using a service called Uber Health. The company says the driver went through background checks. Fox 4's Alex Boyer breaks down the timeline of what happened. Alex. 
Hey guys, we learned some additional details today. Plano police say that suspect was working, as you mentioned, for something now called Uber Health. He was a driver for uh, them when he picked up that 12-year-old girl back on July 9th. Uh, we know that she was in the Uber alone. Now, 31-year-old Robert Johnson III is charged with aggravated sexual assault of a child. He bonded out of jail yesterday, five days after his arrest. Plano police say he picked up the girl from a medical facility in Frisco and was supposed to take her directly to her mom's house in Plano. In I've never heard of Uber Health. Have y'all ever heard of Uber Health before? Let me try to pull this up on the app. I've never heard of Uber Health before in my life. I've heard, heard of Uber Eats, right? Regular Uber, catching a ride. I've heard of Uber Black, Uber X, um, Uber Comfort. I've never heard of Uber Health before in my life. Let me play this while I look for this app because I, I don't know what this is. Instead, investigators say Johnson pulled into the parking lot of a business located in the 4200 block of Legacy Drive and allegedly sexually assaulted her in the car before dropping her off. A police affidavit describes the incident in graphic detail. He allegedly told her not to tell anyone or there would be, quote, issues. The girl told her mom the next day. Plano police addressed what a lot of people are asking, why a 12-year-old girl was traveling in a rideshare alone. Between the facility and Uber Health, they um, say that this isn't, this is a great way to get your child to and from locations when maybe you don't have the means to do so. The mother thought that she was doing the right thing. She thought that they would have done the right thing. Um, unfortunately, no matter how many things are done right, uh, these predators are still going to infiltrate these systems, whether. You know what the worst part about this is? You know why, it's, why, why we about to be taken over by robots and auto, artificial intelligence? is because the humanistic aspect of things absolutely ruin it for everybody. So whereas you can do all of the background checks that you want, you can do all of that, whatever. It just means that whoever it is that's doing some of the most egregious things, they just ain't been caught yet. Maybe they got these nasty thoughts. Maybe they out here uh, about to switch over to being a part of the alphabet community. Who knows? Maybe they're about to add another letter to the alphabet community to include pedos. I don't know. But the one thing that I do know is two things is for sure, certain is that I'm conflicted personally. I'm conflicted. And the reason that I'm conflicted is because I believe in the justice system. I believe in innocent and so proven guilty. But it's very difficult, very difficult to believe in innocent and so proven guilty when you're talking about minors, 12 year olds young girls that's getting assaulted by grown men pulling over in the parking lot and then telling them not to say anything or there's going to be problems or there's going to be trouble. It's very, very difficult when you start to talk about the most vulnerable amongst us because as a father of a girl, I will crash out. I will absolutely positively crash out when it comes to mine and my youngin. A hundred percent. He, if he didn't even have, you know, bad background, it, you know, whatever it is, he made that decision to, you know, assault a child on that day. And in a statement to Fox 4 News. We don't need to read all of that. We know what's going on. It's very bad out here in these streets. So I will tell y'all to make sure that y'all protect y'all friends and family. Uh, if you can keep two parents inside of the household to make sure that y'all work together to make sure y'all youngest and the most vulnerable among y'all are protected. Um, and just know that it, demons are walking around in human form and they're looking to do the worst of the community. Uh, last but not least, rising concerns over repossessions and mortgage defaults are in effect. Take a look. Oh, the list is long. The cost of the cars we drive, the apartments we... Ooh, she kind of pretty. I like the way she rocking out. Okay, baby girl. Long legs, no care, good knees. Right, good knees, good elbows, nice neck, neck matching the face. We rocking with it. Rent, the homes we own, the cost all going up, up and away. And now it's causing a concerning upward trend in car repossessions and defaults on home loans. So what can be done to protect your biggest investments? Let's get to consumer investigator Hank Winchester. Whether it's the price of your morning coffee or paying for your vehicle, the cost of almost everything, it seems to be going up. This morning, a real look at the real numbers and what you can do to control those costs. Eggs, milk, 
everything. I go in the Hollywood market and get two bags and I spend over 50 bucks. Andrew Ballard, like many of us, dealing with these difficult economic times, whether it's groceries or his car, he's making some changes. I have, oh, have a pre-owned car right now, the 2014. Just got done paying off here a few years ago. So I'm, you're gonna keep that keep until that. it goes. You bet. Car, rent, and real estate prices are soaring. People feeling the pinch, but that doesn't mean that deals can't be found, especially right now in the used car market. We've been kind of teetering the last few years with the prices of the cars, up one month, down the next month. But right now we got about 94 cars in inventory. The average vehicle price though right now across the country, about $48,000. That's insane. It's absolutely insane. 100%. It's not going to change until y'all absolutely uh, change y'all spending habits. But more importantly, this is one of the things that they don't want to talk about. And they want to keep telling y'all that, oh, man, we got plenty of jobs and unemployment is at a record low. But now wages inflation has been killing y'all for years now. Y'all absolutely is losing. Look, they don't want to have a conversation about the rising mortgage defaults and the repossessions that's happening in our communities. You know why? Because they got to keep that part under wraps. If they can distract you and keep you engaged on the latest killing by the police officer that's always highlighted every four years around election time, if they can keep y'all engaged on identity politics, then they can distract y'all from the fact that y'all real life slaves to the dollar. You're a slave to the fact that you can't even live the lifestyle and the American dream is slipping through your fingers every single day because you don't even have the ability to raise multiple different children. You know, one of the reasons why they left the border open, one of many reasons, is because they know that y'all can't afford to continue to have children. One of the reasons, one of the reasons why they left the borders open is because we need a new slave class to work these jobs, and they know that we need an influx of people into this country to do the things that you don't want to do, because we no longer want to work for the wages that they are giving us or they are giving you guys. And so as a result, what they've done is they've let an influx of people come over here, get licensed. They paid for them. They made sure that they had uh, health care coverage, going to your schools, learning English, uh, getting hotel rooms, getting medical coverage and everything like that. Because you can't even afford to breathe. You can't afford to breathe. Y'all was against getting married and having roommates. You don't have to in order to be able to survive unless you change your lifestyle at some point. But they don't want this to be a part of the conversation. Two things that they're trying to hide. They don't want to talk about the price of, of goods and services and you being able to survive off the same wages despite the cost going up. And they don't want to talk about immigration, but we're going to get into immigration shortly. The average auto loan, just over 7%. But here's the shocker. Auto repossessions right now up 23% from last Up 23%. That means that you had in your car, and you know it's getting more difficult to have that car, right? Because it's now cloud. It's now based in the cloud. So they send an automatic update. They know exactly what the car is. They're not going to have trouble finding your car. They're just going to send it right to the repo man. The repo man going to wait till you go and park your car, or you're going to go get some gas. You're going to walk in the gas station, and he's going to hook it up. And he's going to be taking your car last year at this time. I always recommend looking online. You can type in, you know, Michigan Credit Union best rates out there and then, you know, we could shop it from there. When it comes to home repossessions, they too are soaring and with low inventory, it remains a very aggressive seller's market. At 3%, you might have been looking at around $1,200 on a $300,000 loan. Just now, if there's a reset, you're looking at probably $2,000 if it's up to 7%, which are the current rough terms. Low arm rates that were locked in during the pandemic, well, they're now expiring. Home insurance costs are on the rise and so too are property taxes. It creates a concerning financial scenario. I already broke down to y'all exactly how property taxes work and why they're raising y'all property taxes and your cities and your counties inability to be able to manage their finances effectively. And so they then go to the well and they pass that cost over to the consumers. And so you guys are losing your homes. You can't afford to breathe no more. Your house wasn't really yours. You thought that you bought it. But in reality, if you didn't pay your property taxes, you was going to be losing it. Over there in Chicago and Cook County, they got property tax bills that has exploded up to 86 percent. People are losing their homes. They're losing their cars. They're losing their minds. But y'all keep voting a certain type of way. We're going to get into it. Don't worry about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's your quick hits.